Oh, hey guys. It's Peter at LostAngler.com. And today what we're going to do is we're going to do some tying. We're going to tie a redfish quan. Uh, the redfish quan is basically, it's a quan fly. Except it's bigger. Like we tied on two Um, Most of the time, you tie a quan fly. You know, you look at a size 4, you know, size 6, maybe a size 2, get a little crazy. But with this one, we're looking at a serious fly here. Something's really going to attract redfish's attention, and down here in the marsh, the bigger the better. So, we're also going to do a couple new things today. Instead of, normally I have like something behind the vise so you don't see my table and my tying area, today we're just going to let it be free form. And the reason I'm doing this is because April loves me. I don't know why, but she really does. She loves me. And she bought me a brand new tying table, new fly rod and reel. That is when you know a woman loves you, when they feed your addiction. And I want to say thank you, April. I love you for feeding me and my addiction. So anyway, that being said, it's a little more free form. Get your laptop out, put it on your tying table, tie it together. Grab a beer, grab a glass of tea, grab a cup of coffee, whatever works for you, man. Okay, uh, so today we're going to tie a redfish corn. We're going to start with a 2 aught Gamakatsu SC-15 hook. And for most folks, when you think of quan flies, it's normally like a bonefish or something, right? Well, this is for redfish, so. That's a pretty good size. Alright, then we're going to use some clear nylon thread. Just this hook a little bit. There we are. Set it up a little bit better. Perfect. Okay. So we're gonna put a little thread bump on that a little bit, and then I'm gonna use some plain extra small dumbbell eyes. You can use presentation eyes, black, silver, gold, whatever. The idea is with the extra small eyes, what you're doing is putting just enough weight on to turn the hook over so that the eyes hook up. You can do it flush with the eye of the hook if you want to. I leave myself a little bit of a gap. So if I want to, later on I can add a weed guard and uh, And I generally think it looks a little bit better. Alright, perfect. So that's on there real good. Got to figure eight it on. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of loom. Alright. Next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of yellow, excuse me, gold, and red crystal flash. About three strands of each. Now the red is a color that naturally draws the eye, so it can overpower the gold. So you might want to add extra gold. So we've got the gold right here. And with redfish I've learned that any color works as long as it's gold. So that being said. So we're going to tie it in with red and gold. Okay, we're going to take it, double it over. I've kind of got them pulled in such a way that they're all a little bit uneven. 
We'll trim it all up later. So don't even worry about it right now. So that's on there. Next thing we're gonna add is some tan craft fur. A little bit of tan craft fur. This is the uh, extra select. The extra select just gives you a little bit longer fibers to work with. Right. One thing I've learned about craft fur is that it's a lot like deer hair in that it's got some guard fibers. So just kind of hold it right about here and pull it out. Hmm. All right, then come to the very end and pull out the ones that are just a little bit too long. And that'll give me a nice even tuft to craft fur. Now I'm going to tie it on. Just like so. Trim off my excess. Make it a little bit neater. Next, I'm going to bring on some old school crystal flash in the gold. Here. The reason I'm using the crystal flash is that when I'm putting it into craft fur and other you know synthetic hairs or in feathers, it really seems to flow in a natural fashion with it. So let me take it give myself a little bit of room, double over, and tie it in. Perfect. Now I'm going to repeat the step with the craft fur. About the same amount, maybe a little bit more. Just like so. Pull it up. Pull out my guard hairs. Pull out the extra long ones. Make sure it's roughly the same length. And I nail it down. So, if I lay it all out right, then I'm not going to have to worry about it talking over to one side or another. Trim off my excess. Good to go. Now, all your flash and fibers is all extra long right now. Don't worry. Next thing I'm going to do is I get two pieces of saddle hackle. I'm going to use ginger and red. And to give a little bit of extra love, I'm going to tie in some polars, some uh, Palmer snow. So let me get this, these feathers measured up. I just pulled them out. And uh, pull make sure they're about the same. Here and here. Trim it up. You're going to want to tie it in from the back. So. Just like so. Make sure they're matching up. Length for length. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'll pull, pull the fibers back. Like so. Pull it back. And this is the part I'm going to tie in. This part's on the front. Just like so. Right. I'm just going to nail these pieces down here in the front. And then I'm going to pull in my Palmer chenille, like so. Flush that up. And the reason I'm tying in the Palmer chenille is that down here I found that here in Mobile, conditions where the water is 
really and truly clear enough for sight fishing or not nearly as often as we'd like and sometimes it's shallow enough that I can just see the redfish and I think that extra flash it may not always be the exact trigger mechanism for the fish but they can't eat what they can't see I got this on here I'm going to palmer it around the trick while you're palmering just be steadily pulling everything backwards steadily pull it around backwards as you go Boom. And that's really about as far as you want to go so I'm going to back this up feature. The next feature for mine is going to be eyes and for that I've just got some glass bead mono eyes. I'm going to pull them until they're both roughly around the same length. I'm going to put it up against the fly. See where I want it. Then I'm going to come back and trim off the excess. because it's pretty tough to trim once it's on, on the fly. And I'm just going to let the natural curvature of the mono help me out here. There it is. Very nice. Alright. I'm going to go back over it one more time with some gold flash. That's going to help me cover up all that stuff I've just tied onto the hook shank. I like a redfish quan to be fairly bulky. Especially during the winter when you'll have the larger reds get onto the marshes. Don't really I don't really feel like I can tie a fly that's too big. I think a lot of times especially down here we get the impression from watching the fishing shows you know, watching the guys throwing these smaller redfish flies for places like Indian Lagoon that that's what we need to do and uh, I've tried that and I just I haven't found that to be the most successful thing for me don't get me wrong I've caught fish using smaller flies or what I call Florida flies but it's up to you right. now at this point you can kind of double aid it over the barbell eyes and then bring it around Like so. Nail it down. Good, good, good. We're going to go back to the base. I'm going to tie in the first part of the yarn. Now a lot of people ask me, well, why yarn? Because honestly, there's two reasons. One, it does well, and two, it's cheap. Now, if you just tie it on just like this, 
you're not really going to get the desired effect. So you have to tie it on then comb it out. So just notice I'm just folding it over, cutting it up, folding it over, cutting it up. And with this I've got just, just limitless color patterns I can throw in there. I can essentially make the fly any color in the world I'd ever want. So in a second we're going to just go through here and start tying it all together. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that, guys. My little girl got up from her nap, and so we're back doing this again. It's later in the evening, so if you'll notice, got a new uh, set of drawers on the table. So let's finish up. Now we're going to go ahead and start tying in the body of our quan. We're going to take that yarn we cut up earlier, and we're going to start adding it in. What you want to do is you want to start it basically right at the base of the fly like right here where the feathers your hackle and your palmer chenille stop tie it on just figure eight it see I'm kind of weaving it over I'll bring the hand back around it's going to anchor it <clears throat> doesn't really take too much when you're using the yarn it's kind of like tying on deer hair like if you're uh, spinning it you don't have to worry about it too much. As you tighten up, it'll kind of rock itself out. Now we add in some orange or any kind of. Like to throw an attractor color in. For me, orange has always been a good one. So throwing in a little bit of orange. And don't worry about it if it doesn't look perfect. Now right now when you're just tying in the yarn and it looks rough like this I mean it looks like a mess and you're like oh man this is going to be terrible but there's a couple things we're going to do right before we're done so no worries and they don't all have to be the same length you're going to trim them all up when you're done so right now it's like throwing clay on you're just add to it before you trim it off so don't worry about it at all alright tie it home bring up the other part slide it over Figure out the last part, and you're good to go. Once you've got all that on there, you feel secure with it. Just bring it to the front, nail it down behind the eyes, then bring it up to the to the eye hook. Take it, cut. At this point, you can either use a whip finish or you can finish it off the way I do I use two double half hitches and I got this from a guy named Dave Camus he's got a YouTube channel you can check out he ties a lot of good traditional English flies so to me it's a nice quick easy way to tie it doesn't matter how you tie it off you can just take a little bit of super glue on there to be honest with you It'll do just fine. Boom. Alright. So now you got that. So I'm going to reset. I'm going to turn the fly so you can see I trim it. And I'm going to go get that redone. Give me just a second. Alright, so I got turned. All you're going to do is take it now. Pull the yarn. Trim to the desired level. Pull it out and trim. Right, once you got it 
I don't rub it where you like it. Just gonna take it and trim it out. Now what I like to do now that I've got it at basically the size I want to. Alright. Is I'm going to take the fly, take my scissors, hold them about like this right here, or a little bit of the slightly open, just going to pick it out. And we're going to pick out the whole fly this way, and then we're going to trim it up to get to the desired shape. So just pick it out. Alright, so it's picked out now. It looks like a mess. Take it, lay your scissors on, and trim. Trim, 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 trim. Let me trim it. When we done trim, I'll show you the end result. And right now that we got that done, grab a little bit of loom. It's excess. Boom, boom, boom. Right down the center line. Loom's not going to distort the color any. It's perfectly non-toxic, so if the kids get into it, it's not a big deal. Which, if you're like me. You never know when your rugrats are going to get into something. So, plus it really helps. Helps a lot of your color pop. So, boom, 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 boom. Good to go right there. Looks sharp. Now, for the last little bit, last thing we're going to do. We're going to put a few striations on it, then we'll just trim out the flash. Make it look a little more orderly. And we're good to go. I'm going to do orange. I'm going to do brown. Boom. Orange. Now brown. Um, there it is guys killer quan trim up your flash wait till your loon sets you're ready to rock man it's a good size fly ready to fish like big food if you want to you can take your eye stalks right here put a couple of striations on them I do it just makes me happy I don't really have a good reason for it. Alright, dude. Well, guys. That's it. That's the Lost Angler Redfish coin. Nothing special. Nothing really complicated. If you're not listening to me gab and shoot the breeze, then tie it up pretty quickly. Hope you learned something new. Trust me, this yarn is going to save you a fortune. Colors are just limitless. For me, it's really easy because April crochets. So, boom. There we are. Okay, cool. I hope you guys enjoyed the fly. Uh, yes, I do know that my tying area changed throughout the video. When we first started doing the video, uh, Lily was sleep taking a nap she woke up we did some errands came back ended up getting some new stuff for the desk always a plus and finished out the video hope you enjoyed it um like i said leave me a comment in the comment box let me know like it subscribe it share it with your friends i don't care um go catch some fish and we'll see you on the water thanks for watching